Hi, let's talk about automation. So automation is essentially just a way to have your settings change throughout the song. So instead of having like just one static volume through the entirety of the song, you can actually have the volume or anything else for that matter change from one, one section to the other or fade in and out and do all kinds of fun stuff. So let's just listen to this little passage that we have on this song right here. We don't tremble. So maybe we want the, like the vocals to be going up in volume as the chorus approaches, and we want to automate that. So in Cubase, there are two great little funky buttons right here that says R and V. Let's see if I can zoom in on them. Here we go, those guys. So we'll get back to the R later, but the W, sorry, is to write automation. So the cool thing about that button is that whenever you have it pressed, anything you touch while playing the song will be automated. So for instance, if I were to just hit play and start taking the volume fader up and down, we'll see what happens. Let's, uh, let's just do that. We are So you'll notice that this little guy popped up that wasn't there before. So this here is essentially like a list of all the things that we currently have automated. So the list starts empty, as you can see on the other tracks, but the, the moment we start automate something, we get this little guy. And we can see the changes that we just automated are written to this track. And whenever we play it back, you will notice that this fader moves up and down according to the programming that we just did. We are there. We are the lightning is so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's one little gotcha about this. So if we just go to, say, like the verse, we're like, oh, it's a bit quiet. You'll notice something here. The moment I pull that up, we start adding these little data points in, and the latest data point here actually applies to the rest of the song. So, say you've done like your entire mixing, you've done all the volume changes, and then you're like, oh, this, the second verse can use a little louder vocal, and you start doing the automation, and suddenly, you have messed up your entire volume for the rest of the track. And we don't want that. So there's one good way to avoid that problem. And that is by simply using the pen tool and put, say, mm -hmm. let's go over here. So we want the volume to be back as normal at the pre-chorus. So we just make sure to put one data point there, and now we can do whatever we like, and we will not change anything after it. And even better, if we put a data point before as well, now we can change anything we like in between those two points, and we will not ruin anything. So now, if we just do the same thing, When fades a line, a prize of joy in the line. You are strange, you are You'll notice that the moment that I let go of the fader, it just jumps back up to the volume that it, it was at before. So that's a great way to not ruin all your work, just because you started automating things. However, I would say an even better way to do this is to just, if we put a starting point, and an end point, we get this little icon. Let's see if I can zoom in out. Hold up, let me do that again. No, wait. There we go. This little guy. And if we press that, we can actually move just this one section up and down without affecting anything else and without having weird ups and downs that we didn't intend. 
So if we now we can actually mix with our ears as well. So we just hit play and we go on this one. So maybe we we're good with that. So now we just have this volume going between these two sections and we have not changed anything else uh, involuntarily. But now we have this sudden spike up, so what I like to do is just put one data point slightly before and one data point slightly after, and then we can remove these two and we'll have a bit of a fade. Now if we like we can kind of adjust how this fade works, but I usually kind of keep it that even. So that's kind of neat. But there's so much more things than just volume that we can automate. Remember that I said like essentially anything that we touch will be automated. So for instance, if we want, so as we go into the second course here, this is a bit different transition. Let's just listen to it. So maybe we we'll just want to put an echo on that thunder. So you can actually automate the send. So if I just hit play and we automate this. Let's actually solo it so that you can hear it better. And just solo the delay too. So nothing before it goes into the delay, and nothing after it goes into the delay, but we still have the delay echoing way past the stop send point. And I, now we kind of, oh, and you'll notice here as well, now we have two things here, because we have automated two different things. So we have the volume, and we have the delay, and let's just, for the sake of demonstration, also do a bit with the uh, with the panning. When fades a line, step up, rise up, join the line. You are strength, you're a tower. We so you can essentially do how many of these you want. And um, so now we've essentially just done the um, the things that the settings that are on the track, but you can go into. Uh, into an actual plugin and start automating the settings inside that plugin. So if we go to this instrumental part, let's see if I can make it visible for you. And I don't know where. But like, so I have this fun little plugin here. That essentially does. Every time we've come to this. So that's a lot of fun, and we can actually automate that one as well. So this is settings inside the plugin, but we still just have the right automation enabled, and we just hit play and start doing our thing. And you'll notice that we actually, no you won't because my camera is in the way. There we go. So you can see that did write the automation as well. And now if we play it, we don't even have, need to have the plugin open. Just the way that we made it. So. Now we've been do doing a lot of writing to the automation. So what the hell is this read automation R thing? That's essentially, essentially whether or not the track should care about what you just did over here. 
So now it reads from it and it does all the things that we program it to do. But if we don't want that right now, maybe we've done like a super obnoxious effect that we don't want to listen to over and over. We can just take that away and it will pretend as, as if we didn't do anything. It essentially just disables the automation. Which is going to sound like garbage if it's stuck in the setting that doesn't sound good. So let's remove the effect again. Every time we've come to and now it's just like it never even happened. So that's about it. That's my recommended workflow for automation is doing this little thing because then you don't mess up anything else but you can do however you like. So go have fun with that.